In today's adventure, we're going to Kusadasi, Turkey through Gate 1 Travel. Now, this is actually our second day on our cruise. And this is the Celestial Discovery Ship. We've had six days in Greece on the mainland, and we'll have a total of four days on a cruise. As usual on the cruise, we start with a big breakfast each day to kind of keep us energized, ready to go. And this was a hard day because we had to get up at 5.30, have breakfast at 6 a.m. and be ready to get on the bus at 6.45. So right when we got off the cruise ship, we were in the port and we went straight to the shuttle buses to give us a tour of the area. Now, our local tour guide did take us to the little shopping area right before we started the tour of the ancient ruins. And you can see this was a very clever store. It was called Genuine Fake Watches. And the person that created that name was genius. Everybody ran into that store to see what was available. I actually bought a hat to keep my hair down the whole trip. Then we went straight to the entrance to the magnificent archaeological site of Ephesus. Now when we entered this site, there were plenty of local dogs and cats there. And we did learn a lot of the dogs had a little tag behind their ear. And that means they have already been vaccinated by the city. Now, one thing I really love about Greece and Turkey both is they don't have animal control. So the local people do take care of the stray animals and all the stray animals are well behaved. They're well fed and they're very friendly. They like to be pet. I saw about three or four dogs and cats that if they were in our home state, I would definitely kidnap them and raise them as pets. They were amazing, beautiful animals. Now, our tour guide took us down these ancient streets that used to be filled with homes and retail businesses. And at first, they were kind of like all the other archaeological sites we had seen until we turned the corner. And then it was amazing. But first, we have another cat we have to look at. And if you look at the bottom of this hill, you can see some of the site that they've tried to recreate. They found all the pieces, and the way I understood it is they pieced it back together to kind of look like it did back in ancient times. Now, all of these ruins were buried at one time, and they've started to excavate everything, and they even found this ancient mosaic floor. Now, they said this was part of probably a retail business or a home, and actually, this civilization was very advanced because some of the richer homes had indoor plumbing. Now, here's an example of indoor plumbing for the men's restroom they found in one of the buildings, and you can see how it works. And you can also see they didn't have any privacy. They sat right next to each other. And hey, look, there's another cat. And I will say of all the ruins we saw throughout the entire trip, my two favorites were the Parthenon in Athens and these ruins in Ephesus. They were amazing. And this is what the outside of this building looked like. And then this is what the inside looked like.
And as we started to make our way out of the ancient ruins, we did get one last treat, and that was seeing where their stadium was. It was massive. And then we started making our way to the shuttle bus. We got to walk through this beautiful row of trees. And then right at the restrooms, we found this huge family of cats. And of course, we had to take their picture and video because we love cats and dogs. And wait until you see this cat. I wanted to take this one home so bad. His face just looked like a statue. I love him. And then we passed through a couple more souvenir shops on the way to the bus just to pick up some last minute trinkets. And one of our tour mates did buy these ancient coins and he spent $100 on these, so I hope they are real. Our next stop on the tour was to a business that made handmade carpets. Now we did get a couple of ladies showing us how they made the carpets and this was amazing. They do it on this huge loom and they gave us demonstrations on how they made the knots and you can see they were very fast and this man, I think he was the owner of the business, he shows us how they go by a pattern. Like you see her at the bottom making the beautiful carpet and then at the top is the pattern she's following. Next up, they showed us one of the first steps of making silk carpets or rugs. You can see they have these cocoons and they would soak them in water and then they would start pulling the strings out, which were actually silk. And we all got to feel it and you would be surprised how strong they were. It was almost like fishing line. And then they started walking us through their carpet gallery, showing us some of their works of art. We don't just call them carpets, but we call them works of art because they're so beautifully handmade. Now they had some you can hang on the wall, they had the ones you could put on the floor, and part of the Gate One tour did include this demonstration and shopping experience. And then the next step was they brought us to a big showroom, which was more like a display area where they would start rolling out the carpet so you could see the different patterns and the different designs. Some of the staff offered us either wine or this hot apple cider. And it was actually delicious. It was really sweet and very hot, but so good. Now we were just super impressed with the quality of these carpets. They rolled out many, many beautiful designs and they said some of the artists, it took them between a year to five years to make some of these. And we started talking about it and we became interested in actually buying one of the carpets for our house. We don't have an expensive carpet like this, so we thought it might be a nice little investment to put in the hallway. So we were gonna look at the hallway pieces. And when they started showing the pieces, they showed us a really pretty green carpet. And green's actually my favorite color. So after we considered it and we thought about how much work went into these carpets and what a beautiful piece of artwork it was, we did decide to buy this green hall runner. And then after the carpet experience, we did get to go outside and they had snacks and refreshments for you just for thanking you for coming in. And then we drove through the town back to the ship and we did have a couple of really cool stores right before we got to our port that we did drop in to see. They had all kinds of their Turkish candies, they called Turkish Delight. And then right next door to the candy store, they had a shop where you could get some genuine fake bags. So after we walked through the shopping area, we were at the port and it was time to say goodbye to Akusadasi Turkey.
So we did get back on the ship and then we had a quick lunch and then we went back to the room just to get a little bit of rest because this was actually one of our double day stops. So our second stop for the evening was to Patmos, Greece. So the cruise ship arrived in Patmos at about 5 p.m. and we had to get on tender boats to take us to the main part of the island. So we decided to not take the group tour and we tried to venture out on our own and what we found was a taxi that would take us up to the top of the mountain to see the cave and to see the monastery. Now the cab ride was 40 euros and there was four of us and so we only had to pay 10 euros each to get up there. Now the admission to get in the cave was only 3 euros and the admission for the monastery was 5 euros. So that was only a total of 18 euros for us to take this excursion when the company that was offering the excursion was charging $72 per person. So we saved a good bit of money doing it ourselves. Now the views from the top of the mountain were beautiful and we could actually see our cruise ship. So the way I understand it, the Apostle John was exiled to Patmos by the Roman Emperor. And in this cave that we just visited, he wrote the book of Revelations there. And they would not let you take pictures or video inside the cave. But it was a pretty cool cave to see. So included in our taxi fare, he did pick us back up and drop us off at the foothills of the monastery. Now no one warned us the walk was so steep. It was a very difficult walk to make to get to the top where the monastery was. There's a lot of pretty doorways we took pictures of. We stopped and took some selfies just to catch our breath because again, it was a long walk. No, you were not actually allowed to take video and pictures inside the monastery. So we just got some from the doorway so everybody could kind of see how pretty it was. So on our way out from exiting the monastery, we did see some more windmills in the distance from the rooftop. And then it was time to jump back in that taxi and go to the shops down below. So we shopped a little bit before we had to get back on the ship. And we did pick up a few more souvenirs and trinkets. So we returned to the ship and we decided to go to the fancy dinner, the sit down dinner instead of the buffet. And it was okay, but the food wasn't as good. So we just kind of explored around the ship just a little bit more. It was newly renovated, it was very pretty. And then we decided to go to the 915 show and it was cabaret, it was a great show. So for these cruises, you really get a lot of bang for your buck. It was like you get to see a Broadway show, you get great dinners and it's all included in your cruise price. The entertainers were spectacular. They had some really good voices and there were some great dancers. Just a really good show. I'm so glad we went to see it. So day two on the cruise was very successful. It was a lot of fun and we got back to our room and they had let our bed down and left us a little treat. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying our travel videos and stay tuned because I will do a couple more for day three and day four and then we're back home to the USA.